Welcome to worship this morning at Middleton Community United Church of Christ, where we say that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today's first reading is from the book of Psalms, chapter 23, verses 1 through 3, and this is from the inclusive translation. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. God restores my soul. God leads me in paths of righteousness for God's name's sake. Our second reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 26 through 30, and this is from the First Nations version. Look to the winged ones who soar on the wind. Do they plant seeds and gather the harvest into a storehouse? No, but your Father from above gives them plenty to eat. Do you not know he cares even more for you? Can worry add even one more step to the length of your life's journey? Why do you trouble yourself with what to wear? Have you seen how the wildflowers grow in the plains and the meadows? Do you think that they work hard and long to clothe themselves? No. I tell you, not even the great chieftain stands in peace, wearing his finest regalia, was dressed as well as even one of these. If Creator covers the wild grass in the plains with such beauty, which is here today and gathered for tomorrow's fire, will he not take even better care of you? Why is your face so small? Here ends our scripture readings. May God bless our understanding. From Arianne Braithwaite-Len in her book, uh, Ash and Starlight, this is called, When I Need to Trust, There's Enough Time. Dear Jesus, you tell me to consider the lilies and birds. You promise me I have everything I need. You call me to surrender in trust. You sing me into greater slowness where I can believe there is somehow enough time that I am enough. Yet I clutch on to the crazies and the frantic, they spin, the spin of so much activity makes me feel productive. Productivity means success, means value, means admiration, is lie. Belovedness as your child means good, means enough, means yes, is true. This is my identity, never lost and never earned, I keep thinking I must work for what I've had the whole time. I can never live as you call me to, Jesus, when I am hurried and scattered, swinging from item to item on that scrap of bullet-pointed scribble gloating on the counter. Even when I do every item on that list, it doesn't mean that I come to the end of the day satisfied or that I go to bed with a heartbeat of peace. What is true in my fritter of activity proves true in my prayers. I so swiftly swipe away the sweetness of one answered prayer because I've already focused on the next need. Like a cloud, my anxiety shifts, hovering from one corner of life's landscape to the next. But for today, and maybe I'll only make it today, I trust there is enough time to do and to be that for which you ask. I will melt into the resting ground of green pastures and still waters where the frenzy cannot reach. I will use what time I have to make it a resting ground for all your children. Amen. Jesus is 
I have to confess uh, this morning, and some of you might already know this about me, but that I am a recovering workaholic. I like to be busy. I like to be productive. I have historically uh, planted my self-worth in that which I can produce and achieve. For those of you, anybody in the room who might be familiar with the Enneagram, yes, I am a three. Uh, And if you don't know what that is, you can look it up and cry for me. Uh, but I, I uh, like to produce. Uh, this image is not my desk, but if you've been in my office, you know that this is what my desk looks like. Uh, so I like to have lots of projects happening all at the same time. I like to say yes to new things, and I like to see the piles get bigger and bigger with ideas and tasks uh, and dreams for what could be. Now, over the years, uh, I have learned that this is great and a gift, but not uh, always sustainable, right? 
Uh, and I've learned that there are some parts of this uh, in my own self that maybe I need to examine a little bit, right? Part of what comes with this is my own uh, ego, this idea that's taken me a while to admit that I like doing all the things because sometimes deep down I don't think anybody else can do it as well as I can. I'm seeing nodding heads already, so I think maybe there are uh, some others in this room uh, who hold that. The other uh, thing that comes along with this that I think kind of undergirds my working uh, is fear, right? That if I'm not producing, do I have a place here? If I'm not doing all the things, if I'm not uh, offering something of value to the communities in which I find myself, then will they let me stay? For a long time, uh, the church has recognized the main line, or the mainline church has recognized the need uh, for clergy to take sabbaticals. Uh, breaks in ministry. The, the standard in recent history has been to offer ordained ministers uh, three months off every five years to step away from ministry, to step away uh, from this hustle and bustle in, a, in a, a job and a calling that can often infiltrate every part of, of our lives. Uh, now, some of you might know, especially if you were here a year ago, that when I started at MCC back in March of last year, I asked for something a little different. Uh, and Sarah, our moderator, who was the chair of the search committee at the time, went to bat for me. Uh, and, and for that, I'm grateful. Which means that I'm getting ready to be gone uh, for a month. And when I tell people that, they're like, how long have you been there? And I say, oh, I've been here a year. Um, and every year, uh, while I am your pastor, I'm going to take the month of July off. Uh, and rather than have a longer sabbatical every five years, uh, I took a little less vacation in exchange for this. So if you want to do the math, if you're concerned, uh, it all evens out, right? It all evens out. Uh, but I wanted to take a moment to talk about that today and reflect a little bit about why we made that decision and why I asked for that and why I think it's important uh, for my own self to take that time off um, every year rather than every five years. On a very practical level, you know I have a two and a half year old. Um, and when I started thinking about how pastors my age and with kids at home often use their sabbaticals, they use them to spend quality um, extended time with their kids. And I got to thinking that Asa probably wants that every summer uh, and not every five years. Uh, and so being able to step away and to really focus on him uh, every summer is a gift that I'm really excited about. Uh, but the other side is that I uh, have come to see uh, what burnout looks like in my colleagues and with people who are leading the church uh, here, and now I see all the pastors and the retired clergy nodding their heads. Um, and I have come to the decision that it's better uh, to take time off before you need it. That it's better to say that I'm going to live my life in the rhythm that God sets up, to step back and to step away and to recharge and renew before burnout happens. And we know that burnout can lead to all kinds of things. It doesn't just hurt the person who's burning out, right? Uh, it leads to ethical violations. It leads to harm in families and in the lives of children and home relationships. And it leads to leaving, uh, not just ministry, but fields that lots of people work in, right? Burnout doesn't always ex only exist uh, in ministry. But we know that God calls us to rest, not just uh, for minutes or hours, but for days and for seasons. God invites us to let the rhythm of creation shape our lives from those very first words in our sacred text. Technology has given humanity the ability to ignore the natural rhythms of the world, right? The day comes to an end and we turn on the lights. It gets uh, too cold and we turn on the furnace. In our home, uh, you might know that we are waiting on these lovely ladies right here to start laying eggs. 
uh, which should happen by the end of the summer. They just came to live with us in April. For those wondering, yes, they do have names now. Their names are Loretta, uh, uh, Emmy Lou, June, there's a June, <laughs> uh, Patsy, and Dolly. Dolly is the blonde. Um, anyway, we're, we're waiting for our chickens to start laying uh, later this summer, and I have become somewhat of a chicken expert myself. And one of the things I really love about chickens is they don't lay all year round, right? So uh, chickens, especially bred for backyard laying these days, lay quite a bit. Once we start getting eggs, we'll probably get uh, three or four eggs a day from this flock. Uh, but when the days get shorter, they're going to stop laying. Now, you could uh, induce them to keep laying if you turned on lights in their coop at night and extended the, day, the daylight hours a little bit. Um, but if you don't, they'll naturally stop laying, uh, usually around October, November. Um, and they won't start laying again until the spring. And this isn't based on uh, weather. It's actually based on the hours of daylight that they get during the day. It is a very natural thing. We've never given extra light to our chickens in the winter because I think they deserve a break. But on a purely practical level, it takes a lot of energy uh, for a chicken to produce an egg, especially every single day. Um, and they need that energy in the winter to keep their bodies warm. Right? They need that energy in the winter so to sustain them in that season. So I've been thinking a lot about this, right? And we find things like this in nature across the, across the board, uh, that things happen in cycles and in seasons. Uh, and we work really hard as humans to ignore those cycles and those seasons and to produce through them. So the, uh, as we heard Emily say earlier, we get this idea of Sabbath rest from the Bible. Now, there's actually two words that are often translated as rest uh, in, in our scripture in the Old Testament. The first uh, is Shabbat, which uh, means to stop working, right? It literally means to cease, right? To, to, to stop, to put down your work, and to stop working. And uh, the other one is Nuach, which means to settle in, right? to uh, get comfortable. Nuach, uh, to me, it invokes more the feeling of like sitting around a fire, right? And resting into a comfortable chair in the presence of those you love. That's a different kind of rest than just stopping working, right? So in Genesis 2, we get both of these words used very close to one another. Uh, so Shabbat is used at the end of that story. We know really well that at the end... God creates the world, and then God stops working. God uh, takes a Shabbat, takes a Sabbath. God finishes the work. But then immediately after that, we get this word nuach. When God places uh, humanity into creation, God says, uh, or the scripture says, uh, that God settles humanity into creation. Think about that for a minute. This word uh, that means rest is the word that is used for God putting humanity into the rhythm of creation. These words are connected. God rests from working and then dwells, settles with the people, settles with humanity. I um, have gotten the chance to take a sabbatical, one of those, you know, regular three-month sabbaticals in my life when I was in ministry in Platteville. And as I prepared for that work, um, I started planning for my sabbatical, and I got it in my idea because I have this propensity to produce and to achieve that I was going to get a Lilly sabbatical grant. Uh, so the pastors in the room know what a Lilly sabbatical grant are. Uh, they're really competitive, uh, but I was 
going to get one. Um, <laughs> and they take a lot of work, right? So the, the application is like 20 pages long. You have to put together a committee in your church, and your church has to commit to do all this work, and you've got to commit to plan this. I mean, people are planning uh, three-month European adventures, huge projects, right? And I was going to get one. And so I'm working through uh, the sabbatical uh, uh, application, and uh, I was talking to my therapist about it, and she very nicely sat there and listened to me tell her about all of the grand plans that I had for this sabbatical. And then I started crying <laughs> because I was overwhelmed by the planning of my rest. How many of you have taken a vacation and come back more tired than when you left? So I threw the application away, and then my therapist made this really brilliant suggestion. And in the six months leading up to my sabbatical, I put a whiteboard in my office. And every time I had a new idea that would create a new pile on my desk, rather than start to work on that idea, I wrote it on the whiteboard. And that became my not-to-do list. And for six months, I didn't start anything new. And for six months, I uh, grew, it became a very, full, a very full whiteboard. And the agreement was that that didn't mean that any of these were bad ideas, right? But if they were still there in the year after my sabbatical, then I could go back and I could pick which of those ideas God was calling uh, myself and the church to take on. A not-to-do list. There is uh, good news in this invitation. The first uh, is that God is God, and thank God for that, right? This is the message that I hear in my rest when I look at the piles and the lists that taunt me. God is God, and I am not, and I can thank God that I don't have to do it all that you do not have to do it all. And you are beloved, and you are worthy, and you belong simply because you are. So we can look, we very conveniently have a meadow where we can observe the flowers and the birds of the air. And as Middleton Community Church is one of the busiest places that I have ever been in my entire life, <laughs> and I've been a part of a lot of churches, I think uh, my challenge for us as we live into this new rhythm of having a pastor leave for just a couple weeks every summer um, is to remember that what we're building and what we are doing here is so much bigger than who we are and what we produce. It is so much bigger uh, than our numbers and our plans and our budgets. What we are doing here is offering a space and a place where people can come and rest and stop and settle into the love of God into the love of a God who creates the world in this way. This is completely countercultural to how our American lives work. And six days a week, I know that so many of you go out and you work from sun up to sundown, and then you turn on the lights and you keep working. And I know that you do it because I do it too. And so I want to invite us and I want to challenge us as a community to notice the flowers and the birds and to ask, what are we worrying about? And to know that God is God and that we are not, and we will keep doing this work, but this work will not end because we rest. In fact, this work will be strengthened because we rest. Let's pray together. Gracious God, like seeds planted in darkness, call us to rest. The seed planted is not overcome by darkness, but finds nourishment in the soil. 
Help us to trust you, to trust that there is more than enough time to do and be that for which you ask. Gather us in to melt into the resting ground of green pastures and still waters where frenzy cannot reach. Empower us to use what time we do have to join you in creating a landing place, a resting ground, a Sabbath home for all your children. Amen. A few uh, quick announcements in the life of the church. First, this is a very important one. A reminder that next week we will be worshiping not here, uh, but across the street at Forward Garden. We'll be holding a joint service with the other MCC, with Madison Christian Community. So Pastor Jen will be there along with their other pastor, Pastor Nick, uh, and we will worship together there and bless the fields for this growing season. Uh, Please uh, bring a chair, dress for the weather. Hopefully it will be a beautiful day. If it is raining, we'll move to the barn. So there is a rain space over there. Parking is limited over there. There is quite a bit. However, uh, if you are able, one, if you usually come to worship on your own, maybe make arrangements to park over here in our parking lot and then drive over together. Um, Or we might have a few people who will be here and maybe shuttle people back and forth. You can walk over there, but I don't want to encourage it just because this is a really busy road uh, and people kind of come flying uh, down. And so it's not the safest road to walk along. Um, So find a way over there. But again, there is lots of parking over there, so I don't think it should be too tight. Um, And it's going to be great. There's also, you'll see, this isn't the best, it's all small, but the the orange box on there, uh, there's an area, if you have somebody with uh, more mobility issues, they should be able to pull up there and walk right into where we're doing this, the service, which has flatter ground. Um, And then uh, on June 20, oh, Neighbor Day. Neighbor Day is coming August 27th, and we need people to sign up to let us know that they are coming so that we can make plans and have awesome t-shirts for everybody. So this will be another Sunday where instead of worshiping here in the sanctuary, we are going to worship with our hands and our feet out in the community. Uh, On August 27th from 9 to 11, uh, we are partnering with Forward Garden, Middleton, our our church, uh, the Elderberry Neighborhood Association, and Pope Farm Elementary School uh, to host a two-hour service project in the morning at various sites around here. Uh, And then uh, for lunch, we'll have food trucks and fun. That's also Good Neighbor Weekend, so you can come and volunteer in the morning and then uh, go celebrate uh, Good Neighbor Weekend in Middleton as well. It's going to be a great Sunday. If you put your phone up and scan uh, this QR code, it'll take you to the sign-up sheet. You'll also get it in your emails this week. Um, but we would really appreciate you letting us know that you are going, planning to participate. Finally, June 21st, again, is Make Music uh, Madison, and we will be another host site uh, here in the Memorial Garden if the weather cooperates. Otherwise, we'll move into Fellowship Hall again. We have uh, two musical acts, uh, Justin May and the Driftless Plowboys, uh, will be playing from 5 to 8 p.m., Uh, It's going to be a great show. It was a lot of fun last year. We're excited to participate again this year. Uh, Mama Meg's ice cream truck will be on uh, site to serve ice cream, uh, frozen treats. There'll be popcorn for sale and free lemonade also available. So we hope that you'll plan to come and join us. That's a Wednesday night. Bring a blanket and chairs if we're outside. Um, It will be really great. It's a lot of fun. So we hope you'll join us. That is it. Uh, Let us um, uh, continue in this day. Uh, A thank you to everyone who gives financially. A reminder that there are boxes on the wall as you leave the sanctuary if you wanted to leave an offering today, or you can go to middletonucc.org and find the yellow donate button. Let us stand and sing together.
And now, my friends, I invite you to turn as you are able uh, to face these doors that I remind you are not an exit, but an entrance into a week of service. But more importantly, they are an entrance into a week of entering the rhythm that God offers, a rhythm of work and rest and play, a, a rhythm of love and growth. As you go from this place, may you know that God goes with you. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God look upon you with kindness and give you peace today and every day. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and I would invite those who wish to join in membership at Middleton Community Church to come on forward along with their sponsors. I'd there like to go. introduce... Perfect. Cameron and Liz Feist and Lucy, and Benji is not here because he had a baseball game today. <laughs> um, Cameron and Liz have had kind of a roundabout journey to get to Madison. Uh, Cameron is a Florida native, but went to New York for college and ended up loving it and staying there. Liz is a native of Iowa and education here in Madison, UW. And... Um, you might wonder how those two met. They met in a, at a conference in California because they were both working at colleges and needed more education for their jobs. And uh, well, it blossomed from there. Liz moved to New York and worked there. And then when COVID hit, they moved to a cabin in Eagle River during the pandemic that belonged to a family member. And they loved it. And after going back to New York, both of them realized that they wanted to live in Wisconsin. So they moved to Madison, both working at the same jobs virtually. That was one of the wonderful things that happened with the pandemic. So we are so blessed to have them here. And they looked for a church in the Madison area. And guess what? They found Middleton UCC by looking at our website, and they loved it. They were very interested in what we had, so they visited, and they liked it. The children especially loved the Sunday school, and so they are joining to continue their faith journey with us, not only Liz and Cameron, but also Lucy and Benji. So give them a good welcome. I have the honor to introduce Amy Miller and Brady and Bodie. Um, first of all, I wanted to, to say that Brady is nine and he's going to be 10 on June 22nd. And Bodie turns seven in July. So they're very excited about having birthdays. Um, the Millers live in Middleton. Um, they've lived here for three years, about. Um, Amy grew up in Fond du Lac, and she attended Carroll College. Now that it is summertime, uh, she will be um, having a support role in summer school. I'm sure they're excited about that. Um, the family loves going to the pool and playing at a variety of parks. Um, and uh, they like to visit the library uh, to help support um, the love for reading. Um, all three are great singers, and you probably have seen them singing um, at, at various um, kid stuff and pop-up um, events. They're, they're great, so we cheer them on every time they come. Um, uh, I did hear that how great thou art, and for the beauty of the earth is one of Amy, their, Amy's favorite hymns here. Um, I did also ask what brought them to MCC, and um, uh, I heard that it was seeing the sustainability event. Kudos to that. And um, her mom watched the online services and suggested that they come to this place. So I welcome them. And
I have the honor and privilege of introducing Sandy Martello, who might look familiar to you, because Sandy's been coming to the church for, I think we figured, since about 2019, at least. So you might have gone to events and, and sat next to her, and you will continue to, because we're very excited that she's finally joining today after a long pandemic that we were all uh, witness to and survived together. So Sandy is from, um, she was born and raised in Illinois, in, in Rose, is it Roseland? Rose. And around the, Roseland, and around the Chicago suburbs. She was a teacher, a third and fourth grade teacher for 35 years in Orland Park. And she uh, then was at Cal, Calmet, Calumet City. Sorry, these, these, these should be familiar words to me. Um, but I've not been to some of these places. So Calumet City is where she raised her daughters, Lisa and Stephanie, who you might know in our own congregation here, um, before she moved to Naperville, where she worked in retail for 10 years and then ran a spa. So she is a jack of all trades. Well, I'm saying you did. You're running the world. So her daughter, Lisa, now lives in um, Chesapeake, Virginia, with her husband, and they both work in the hotel industry. Her daughter, Stephanie, moved to the Madison area where she met her husband, Eric, and they married and soon had a little one named Edison. There she is, over there. And soon after that, little Everly. When Stephanie and her husband joined the church and when Stephanie moved up to Madison, Sandy moved up to the area and of course with these little angels in our midst uh, has settled here to become part of not just our local community, but part of our church. So we're going to welcome her with open arms and a finally. So glad you're here. <laughs> Please meet Mary Ellen Hanwick, who comes to us from Long Island. She and her husband, George, moved here in November of 2022 to be closer to their son and his family. Mary Ellen has already been a great help to MCC as a shepherd in the kindergarten preschool class and has helped with many other events like Easter egg hunt. She joined in fellowship at Wednesday craft and game sessions one fun fact about Mary Ellen, and I want you all to ask her. Please ask her about the rodeo she hosted on a horse farm to raise money for muscular dystrophy. And that's no bull. We are pleased and honored to introduce Bill and Karen Cullen. In talking with them, we have heard a lot of things about their family, traditions, the outdoors, and food was mentioned often. Karen comes from a large family, so there are many aunts and uncles and cousins they enjoy getting together with. They also have three daughters, the youngest just graduated from high school. The family meets every summer for a camp out their extended family. They swim and eat, play games and eat, fish and eat, <laughs> then they plan what they're going to eat next. <laughs> traditions are very important to them, family traditions, one of which has gone on for several years, playing bingo on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Bill and Karen met towards the end of their high school years and have been married 26 years. Bill works at a computer for an insurance company. Karen works on the phone at an eye clinic. They both love to take day trips and explore museums and find restaurants that serve local cuisine. Bill loves to cook. Karen enjoys the theater. They both love being outdoors. Bill and Karen have expressed an interest in the adult Sunday school class. As they become more familiar with MCC, they look forward to exploring what other opportunities they would like to become involved in. It's a pleasure to introduce the Neary family, Kyle, Jessica, Lily, and Melody. They moved here from Oregon in uh, fall 2020, so in the thick of COVID. 
Kyle has a PhD in astrophysics, and he now does data science with Great Wolf, Great Wolf Lodge Corporate. Jessica uh, is in communications, uh, including previously doing communications for a UCC church. And now she works part-time with a nonprofit organization known as Doing Good Together. Lily just finished fourth grade at Pope Farm and will be uh, starting fifth grade at Cromery in the fall. Glacier Creek. Oh, Glacier Creek, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and she likes Harry Potter. And uh, Melody will be going into second grade uh, at Pope Farm. <laughs> and she likes gymnastics. And the whole family likes Disney, uh, both Disneyland in California and Disney World in Florida. Uh, and when they stay at Disney World, they like to stay at the Polynesian Resort. And uh, we're very happy that they are joining our congregation. Thank you to all of our sponsors. So when new members uh, join our congregation, we have a lot of questions that come up like, what does that mean? And why does it matter? Uh, and one of the things I like to tell new members as well as the whole congregation, anyone is welcome to worship and participate in the life of the church here at MCC. And when people decide to, to enter into membership, they're deciding to enter into covenant to say, uh, I am one of you and you are one of me. And I think the shift is going from guest to host. So after today, you will no longer be guests in this space. This will be your space. And you move into a place of welcoming whoever it is that is coming next. So I'm really excited uh, that you, all of you have made this decision today. So let's do it so that we can keep going. <laughs> Uh, so I've got a few questions for those of you joining today, uh, and I uh, will let you know what the answers are, too, so you can say them together. <laughs> and then there's some stuff for you, too, because this is a two-way thing. So do you profess uh, Jesus to be the center of your faith? If so, please say, I do. I do. Will you join with this congregation in the work that we do, seeking to follow the way of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, and to show love and justice, and to witness to the work of God in this world? If so, please say, I will, with the help of God. I will, with the help of God. Will you be faithful to this community, showing up for those in need and making your own needs known? If so, please say, I will. I will. Will you challenge this community to be the best version of itself and to live up to the things we say we believe? If so, please say, I will lovingly do so with the help of God. I will lovingly do so with the help of God. And will you allow yourself to be changed, shaped, and transformed by this community, living into your called identity as a beloved child of God? This is a longer one, so we're going to do it line by line. <laughs> I will allow myself to be changed, shaped, and transformed. By this community, as I live into my called identity, as a beloved child of God. All right. And now, for the rest of you members of uh, MCC, do you profess Jesus as the center of your faith? Do you covenant together to do the work of the church, seeking to follow Jesus? to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work of God in this world? Will you welcome and be faithful to those who stand here today as they join our congregation, showing up for them when they are in need of community? Will you challenge them to be the best versions of themselves, to help them live up to the things they say they believe? And will you allow yourself to be changed, shaped, and transformed by their presence among us, living into our called identity as a beloved community of God? Let us all pray together. Still speaking, God, 
We give you thanks for the beloved community we are called to create and for these new members in the midst of our work. May their presence among us be valued and may they find a place here where they are invited to grow in their love of you and your world. Amen. Beloved, let us greet our siblings in this family of faith as we offer the hand of Christian love and welcome them into the company of Middleton Community United Church of Christ. Thanks, Jesus. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome, Lucy. <laughs> you look- 